Welcome to today's video about side effects of ZepBound. ZepBound has emerged as one of the most powerful weight loss medications available today, with clinical trials showing remarkable results of up to 52 pounds of weight loss in just 72 weeks. Millions of people struggling with obesity are now turning to this weekly injection as their solution. But behind these impressive numbers lies a critical reality that many patients discover too late. The side effects of ZepBound range from uncomfortable daily challenges to potentially life-threatening complications that could land you in the emergency room. Some side effects are so common that nearly one in three users experience them, while others are rare but severe enough to warrant a black box warning from the FDA. The truth is, the medication insert lists numerous adverse reactions, but many doctors don't have time to explain each one in detail during a brief consultation. Today, we're breaking down the nine most important side effects you absolutely must understand before taking your first dose. Whether you're considering ZetBound or already using it, this information could protect your health and help you make informed decisions about your treatment. Let's explore what the clinical data really shows about ZepBound's impact on your body. Now, here's what you really need to know about ZepBound's side effects, beginning with number one, gastrointestinal disturbances. The digestive system bears the brunt of ZepBound side effects, with clinical trials revealing striking numbers that every patient should know. Nausea affects approximately 29 to 33 percent of people taking ZepBound, making it the most frequently reported adverse reaction. This isn't just occasional queasiness. Many users describe persistent nausea that interferes with daily activities, work performance, and overall quality of life. The mechanism behind this involves ZepBound's action on gastric emptying, essentially slowing down how quickly food moves through your stomach. Diarrhea follows closely behind, occurring in 19 to 21 percent of patients according to FDA prescribing information. The frequency and severity often increase when doses are escalated, which typically happens every four weeks as you work up to higher strengths. Vomiting affects 9 to 13 percent of users, and when combined with diarrhea, creates a serious risk of dehydration. These gastrointestinal reactions are so impactful that they became the leading reason for treatment discontinuation in clinical trials. Patients taking higher doses of 10 and 15 milligrams experienced more severe symptoms with up to 4.3% stopping treatment entirely due to gastrointestinal adverse reactions. Next, side effect two, injection site reactions. Every injection of ZepBound introduces medication directly under your skin, and your body doesn't always respond quietly. Clinical data shows that injection site reactions occur more frequently in patients who develop antibodies against trizepatide. Specifically, 11.3% of patients with anti-trizepatide antibodies experienced injection site reactions compared to only 1% of those who didn't develop these antibodies. These reactions manifest as redness, swelling, itching, or pain at the injection location. While pharmaceutical information often classifies these as mild, the reality for some patients is different. The abdomen, thigh, and upper arm serve as recommended injection sites, and rotating between these areas helps minimize cumulative irritation. However, even with proper rotation, some individuals develop persistent nodules or bruising that last beyond the typical few days. The FDA prescribing information emphasizes proper injection technique, including allowing the medication to reach room temperature before injection and using a fresh needle each time. Despite these precautions, injection site reactions remain an unavoidable reality for a portion of users. Next, side effect three hypoglycemia risk. Low blood sugar represents a particularly concerning complication, especially for patients taking ZepBound alongside other diabetes medications. The FDA label clearly warns that when ZepBound is combined with insulin or sulfonylureas, the risk of hypoglycemia increases substantially. 
In clinical trials involving patients with type 2 diabetes, 4.2% of ZepBound treated patients experienced hypoglycemia with glucose levels below 54 mg per deciliter, compared to 1.3% of placebo treated patients. For patients without diabetes in other trials, hypoglycemia risk remained present, though less common. The physiology behind this involves ZepBound's enhancement of insulin secretion and suppression of glucagon release. When you add insulin or medications that stimulate insulin production to this equation, blood sugar can drop dangerously low. Symptoms include trembling, sweating, rapid heartbeat, dizziness, hunger, and confusion. Severe hypoglycemia can progress to loss of consciousness or seizures. The FDA prescribing information specifically recommends reducing doses of insulin or sulfonylureas when initiating ZepBound to mitigate this risk. Next, side effect four, thyroid tumors and cancer concerns. This warning appears in a black box on ZepBound's label, the FDA's most serious type of warning. Animal studies revealed that tirzepatide causes dose-dependent thyroid C-cell tumors in rats, specifically statistically significant increases in thyroid C-cell adenomas and carcinomas occurred in both male and female rats at all tested doses. The FDA label states clearly that it remains unknown whether ZepBound causes thyroid C-cell tumors, including medullary thyroid carcinoma, in humans because the relevance of rodent thyroid findings to human risk hasn't been determined. ZepBound is contraindicated, meaning absolutely not to be used, in patients with a personal or family history of medullary thyroid carcinoma or in patients with multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. The prescribing information instructs healthcare providers to counsel patients about the potential risk and inform them of thyroid tumor symptoms. These symptoms include a lump or swelling in the neck, hoarseness, difficulty swallowing, or shortness of breath. While human cases haven't been definitively linked to tirzepatide, the animal data was compelling enough for the FDA to require the strongest warning category. Next, side effect five, pancreatitis. Inflammation of the pancreas represents one of the most serious potential complications, with cases ranging from mild to life-threatening. Clinical trial data shows that acute pancreatitis was confirmed in 0.2% of setbound treated patients in the pooled Surmount 1 and Surmount 2 trials, translating to 0.14 patients per 100 years of exposure. While this percentage appears small, pancreatitis is a serious medical emergency. The FDA label warns that acute pancreatitis, including fatal and non-fatal hemorrhagic or necrotizing pancreatitis, has been observed in patients treated with GLP-1 receptor agonists or terzepetide. The characteristic symptom is persistent severe abdominal pain that sometimes radiates to the back and may or may not be accompanied by vomiting. This isn't ordinary stomach discomfort. Patients describe it as one of the most intense pains experienced. The prescribing information clearly states that if pancreatitis is suspected, ZepBound should be discontinued and not restarted if pancreatitis is confirmed. Patients with a history of pancreatitis require extremely careful consideration before starting ZepBound. Next, side effect six, gallbladder complications. Rapid weight loss, which ZepBound facilitates effectively, comes with an increased risk of gallbladder disease. Pool data from Surmount 1 and Surmount 2 trials showed cholecystitis, commonly known as gallstones, in 1.1% of ZepBound-treated patients compared to 1.0% of placebo patients. Cholecystitis, inflammation of the gallbladder, occurred in 0.7% of ZepBound patients versus 0.2% on placebo. Cholecystectomy, surgical removal of the gallbladder, was performed in 0.2% of ZepBound patients and no placebo patients. The FDA label notes that acute gallbladder events were associated with weight reduction. Gallstones form when rapid weight loss pauses the liver to secrete extra cholesterol into bile while gallbladder emptying decreases. Symptoms of gallbladder disease include intense cramping pain in the right upper abdomen, often occurring after meals, particularly fatty ones. The pain may radiate to the right shoulder or back. 
If a gallstone blocks the bile duct, jaundice can develop, causing yellowing of skin and eyes. The prescribing information states that if cholecystitis is suspected, gallbladder diagnostic studies and appropriate clinical follow-up are indicated. Next, side effect seven, cardiovascular effects and heart rate changes. ZepBound impacts your cardiovascular system in ways that require monitoring, particularly heart rate increases. A prospectively planned sub-study of the Surmount-1 trial measured 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure and heart rate in 600 participants. Results published in the journal Hypertension showed that at week 36, heart rate increased with terzepatide compared to placebo by 2.1 beats per minute with the 5 mg dose, 2.3 beats per minute with the 10 mg dose, and 5.4 beats per minute with the 15 mg dose. The researchers noted that the heart rate increase fell within the expected range for GLP-1 receptor agonists. While these increases appear modest, individual responses vary. The FDA label for ZepBound recommends heart rate monitoring, particularly in patients with cardiac disease. Some patients report palpitations, the sensation that the heart is racing or fluttering. Blood pressure changes also occur, with the same Surmount-1 substudy showing clinically meaningful reductions in systolic blood pressure ranging from 7.4 to 10.6 millimeters of mercury. For patients already taking blood pressure medications, this combined effect requires monitoring to prevent excessive blood pressure lowering. Next, side effect eight, kidney function concerns. Your kidneys face indirect risks from ZepBound primarily through dehydration caused by gastrointestinal side effects. The FDA prescribing information contains specific warnings about acute kidney injury. Post-marketing reports have documented acute kidney injury, in some cases requiring hemodialysis, in patients treated with GLP-1 receptor agonists or ZepBound. The majority of reported events occurred in patients who experienced gastrointestinal adverse reactions leading to dehydration, such as nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. In pooled clinical trial data, acute kidney injury was reported in 0.5% of ZepBound treated patients compared to 0.2% of placebo patients. The label specifically instructs healthcare providers to monitor renal function in patients reporting adverse reactions to ZepBound that could lead to volume depletion, especially during dosage initiation and escalation. Patients with pre-existing chronic kidney disease face higher risk because their kidneys have reduced reserve capacity. Warning signs include decreased urea output, swelling in legs and feet, fatigue, and confusion. Maintaining adequate hydration becomes absolutely critical when taking ZetBound, particularly during periods when gastrointestinal symptoms are prominent. Next, side effect nine, allergic reactions and hypersensitivity. While less common than gastrointestinal effects, allergic reactions to ZetBound can occur and range from mild to severe. The FDA prescribing information reports that in pooled Surmount-1 and Surmount-2 trials, 0.1% of ZetBound-treated patients had severe hypersensitivity reactions compared to no placebo-treated patients. Immediate hypersensitivity reactions occurring within one day after drug administration occurred in 2.1% of ZetBound patients compared to 0.4% of placebo patients. The majority of hypersensitivity reactions were skin reactions, such as rash and itching. Post-marketing reports have documented serious hypersensitivity reactions, including anaphylaxis and angioedema in patients treated with terzepide. Anaphylaxis represents a medical emergency with symptoms developing rapidly, including difficulty breathing, wheezing, throat tightness or swelling, severe drop in blood pressure, dizziness, loss of consciousness, and widespread hives. The prescribing information clearly states that if hypersensitivity reactions occur, patients should promptly seek medical attention and discontinue use of ZepBound. The medication is contraindicated in patients with a previous serious hypersensitivity reaction to terzepide or any of the excipients in ZepBound. 
We've examined nine significant side effects of ZepBound that span from common gastrointestinal disturbances affecting up to one-third of patients to rare but serious complications like pancreatitis, thyroid tumors, and severe allergic reactions. The cardiovascular effects, kidney function concerns, hypoglycemia risk, and gallbladder complications require vigilant monitoring throughout your treatment. Understanding these side effects isn't about discouraging you from a potentially beneficial medication, but rather empowering you with knowledge for informed decision-making and careful self-monitoring. Many adverse effects are manageable through dose adjustments, lifestyle modifications, and proper medical supervision. However, certain symptoms demand immediate medical attention and should never be ignored. The decision to use ZepBound should involve thorough discussion with your healthcare provider, weighing your individual health status, risk factors, and treatment goals against potential adverse effects. Regular monitoring, open communication with your medical team, and prompt reporting of new symptoms form the foundation of safe ZepBound use. Attend all scheduled follow-up appointments and participate actively in recommended monitoring protocols. For some individuals, the substantial weight loss benefits clearly outweigh the risks, while for others, alternative approaches may prove more appropriate. If this video provided valuable, science-based information that helps you understand ZepBound side effects more thoroughly, kindly type HELPFUL in the comments. Your feedback motivates us to continue creating well-researched health content. Please take a moment to like this video, share it with anyone who might benefit from this information, and subscribe to our channel for more evidence-based health discussions. Thank you for investing your time in learning about your health, and remember that informed patients make the best medical decisions for their well-being.